Welcome back, everyone. I lied. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, oh, so the end of the last episode of the past, you find the way, and then he didn't. <laughs> yeah, I, I still don't know, you know, do it. <laughs> Sorry. What if there's a key meant to take Blue Fuller all the way to the end? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I, I would, uh, and there's also another one for a green folder and a red folder, too. And you gotta take all three. Oh, fuck. <laughs> like, I know in the second one, like, obviously there's a gnome. You're thinking of Left 4 Dead, too. That was a reference from Half-Life 2. Was it? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, there's just, I had no idea. There's just a gnome that you can carry throughout all... Am I, it, it's Half-Life 2, Episode 1, or Half-Life 2, Episode 2. Or it might be Half-Life 2. <laughs> it's one of... I know for a fact there is one where, like... There is a 2 in the title. Yeah. And not a 3. Those don't exist. I, I know you take it all the way to the end, and then you put it in a rocket, and then you just shoot it off. Yeah. No, 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 no. Okay, well. Well, that's cool. I, didn't, I had no idea about yeah, that. Yeah, it was just a reference, and you know what? It's like, okay, that seems like a little hard, and you gotta make sure you keep saving and make sure you know where it is every fucking moment. Ugh. It's the ultimate escort mission where they can't even move. Okay, uh, could this be the... No, everything seems to be, like... Don't worry, Patrick. I'm not an electrical engineer. I'm a particle physicist. Theoretical physicist. Don't worry, Pat, you can grab them. You got rubber gloves on, I think. <laughs> is this what you want? <laughs> I make you an offering. <laughs> Patrick, uh, control C. Uh, yeah, unit one. Ah, oh, there's just a lever. <laughs> I fucking hate operating one. God, how do I always do it? So, like, we succeeded then? Yeah, we did it. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, so, so Steve, we go oh. I'm going to talk this episode, so I'd appreciate it if you shut up. <laughs> so, uh, I want to talk a little bit about a concert that I went to. What happened to... Oh, I need to take the elevator, okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I went to go see uh, a really good band. The band is known as Grand Funk Railroad. Have you ever heard of them, Steve? What? <laughs> I can talk now? I mean, I'm, I'm fucking hoping this is a okay. co-op commentary Let's Play <laughs> channel. We kind of bailed our whole backbone on the fact that both of us You told me to shut together. up. Well, I mean, I'm just doing that for comedy's sake. I thought you would have understood that. No. The fuck, dude? You can't give me a command and be like, I assumed you'd figure it out. Like, I figured you'd solve it on your own. Actually, yes, I can. That's called improv, Steven. What? <laughs> uh, yes, I've, I've heard of them because you talked about them. Yes, all right. So, <laughs> I, I, I figured that's how you heard about them. So, yes, Grand Funk Railroad is a very good band that I enjoy a lot. They actually have my favorite live album uh, I've ever listened to. It's called Caught in the Act. Oh, I thought it was going to be like, I rammed this train up your ass. Uh, yeah, come on my funky railroad, my Grand Funky Railroad, girl. <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Look it up. Uh, so yeah, uh, me and my dad went to uh, the Roxino near Cleveland. I, I don't so, know. Wait. So, so so it's a casino. Uh, yes. Okay. It's a casino that has a rock hall in it. Uh, do oh, I, 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 I do we it. know what um what that did actually? <laughs> You're asking me. I mean, like I was hoping you you, you paid attention to stuff like this before. Yeah, but it's like. Normally, it's just, like, the specific room that I'm focused on, not, like, multi-rooms. Okay. Well. I, don't, I, don't, I don't believe in multiple rooms. <laughs> no, they don't exist. Uh, I'm going to go down to, like, the bottom floor on here, actually. Yeah. Oh, that's going to kill me. I uh, might not, but, like, probably. I mean, it's safe. definitely going to damage me, is the thing. So, Grand Funk Railroad, we went to the Roxino, and you gotta be at least 21 years old to be in there. I was, without a doubt, the youngest person who went to go see Grand Funk Railroad that day. <laughs> Who was the second youngest? Like, uh, 35? I don't know. I, I'm willing to bet, like, the median age of the crowd there was, like, 40. There was a whole lot of gray hair and a whole lot of bald heads out that day. So, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm scared of that. Well, not scared of gray and hair. I'm just scared of being bald. I like my Yeah, hair. actually, I, th I, thought, I thought the same thing, actually. I mean, when, when I start getting gray hair, I'm just gonna die and be like, yeah, whatever, I don't fucking care. <laughs> I'm not scared of it. I'm just gonna die. Yeah. We're all slowly dying inside. So as I'm dying at a faster rate. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah. So, yeah, continue. Balding. So, yeah, uh, the one, there was a couple of people who sat right next to me. And they were like, wow, I'm sitting next to the youngest person in the audience. And uh, if you don't know, older classic rock fans have a way of talking to younger classic rock fans. Uh, which is to say they shit on all modern music basically all the time. Fair enough. 
Yeah, and they're and they're just like, man, they just don't make music like this anymore. And being somebody who finds plenty of music like they used to make, it, 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 I'm just like, yeah, okay, cool, dude. And then he he kept talking to me, which you know, I didn't have too big a problem about. I'm kind of a people's person, but I'm not. He wouldn't shut up. Is what I'm getting at. Yeah. Uh, so the band came out, nice sold out room. I mean, they kicked was, the guys ass out because you know. He was talking a little too loudly. Yeah, we, exactly. We kind of hear the bass. They all looked like they should be working in record shops and just wondering what fame should have been like. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> they did it. <laughs> Good for them. Uh, I'm happy for literally any. Well, not literally anyone, but I'm mo- mainly happy for people who have followed their dreams and have succeeded. Yeah, dude, that's awesome. Just actually, like... I'm not going to say for everyone, because there's definitely some people where it's like, I'm not happy for you. Yeah, you know, people work hard every day in their life, and, you know, they end up... They made it. Yeah. Good for them. Uh, so yeah, they came out, and, uh, before the show, uh, we said, like, I highly doubt they're gonna be hitting the high notes like they used to, and this seriously 60-year-old dude was going, like, <laughs> like, really high up. I'm very sorry for the mic. Yeah, you know, there you go. I mean, you can turn it down. <laughs> Maybe I'll forget. Yeah, you will, but whatever. <laughs> it is one of those things where it's like, I'll, I'll probably listen to it for, like, five minutes, and since we're at the six-minute mark, I'll just stop at that point. I'll never hear it. All right. Yeah. So, uh... Yeah, no, not much progress being made this episode, but that's fine, you know. Uh, Keep talking about the fucking funk yeah. train. <laughs> yeah, fu- funk train grand style <laughs> came on stage, and they started doing the starting off with the exact set list that uh, they did for my favorite live album. So I'm like, oh, are they just redoing everything? Uh, but it turns out, actually, no, they weren't. <laughs> They, they just did, like, the first song, and that's it, and then, then left. The first two songs, and then, then they were out. They're like, sorry, we're tired. Which, you know, they're pretty old, so maybe I could have understood. <laughs> but they're, like, only 60. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> they if, just... if they're, like, hey, like, yeah. But, like, 60, that, you're you're definitely getting out there, but you're not, like... Paul McCartney, I went to see, and he did three-hour set. That was insane. And he's, like, 80? He's, like, 70. Oh, okay. I think, like, around the age of 80, he's like, yeah, okay, you, you should be in bed. Yeah, that's when, uh, that's when, uh, B.B. King was doing shows, but he was just, like, sitting down in a chair the whole time. Who so, that? Uh, B.B. King was a really good guitarist. He was one of the primary influences of Eric Clapton. Oh, okay. So, you know, I have a very soft spot in my heart for the man, because I love Eric Clapton. Woo. So, yeah, uh, the band comes out, they start playing some of their set, and then, uh, what I was expecting next was for them to play the song called We're an American Band. Uh, they've, they basically rebranded at this point to be like, yeah, we're the American band. So they saved that song until like the very end, oh. their final thing. And, uh, they even did it like it wasn't. So the, the last song you play is typically like your most important song to play for yeah. your crowd. And, uh, they didn't play the national anthem at the end. They played that like halfway through the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But at the, I really expected them to, you know, when they started playing the national anthem, you know, obviously everyone stood up, took their hats off and like this, they brought out an American flag. I really expected them to just, like, go straight from, uh, the National Anthem to an American band. I uh, thought I thought that would have been a really good transition. But no, I can't exactly remember what they, uh, went to. And, uh, I gotta say, their drummer was just really happy to be there, man. He he's happy to be out of the old folks' home. Yeah. He escaped and he's playing drums in front of everyone. And you can tell, he, like, he had, like, an eight-minute drum solo for a song, which is really cool. And, uh, he killed it, man. Huh. Yep, he, so, he, like, he killed the drum set? Yeah, absolutely. It was extremely bloody, and everyone was cheering the whole time. It was fucked up. There was, like, three animals in it. <laughs> <laughs> he filled it with a bunch of ferrets. And, my God, they stopped moving after the first song, but he didn't stop. Like, he asked for more ferrets, and the crowd started throwing more up on stage to him. <laughs> and then Peter came crashing in. Yeah, Peter came crashing in, but he made, but Peter also started giving him ferrets. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> Don't don't beat up ferrets unless it's funny. Yes, I yeah, I am officially on record saying I am against putting ferrets in drum kits and smashing them to death. <laughs> Whew, glad I got that out of my system. <laughs> so, um, what a- anime? <laughs> so one of my favorite songs that they ever played off of my favorite live album was a song called um, "I'm Your Captain Closer to Home," and it's one of their most popular songs. So obviously they, <laughs> so obviously they played it there. Uh, I didn't really like the version they played there. Uh-huh. So, uh, they have, uh, usually a pretty mellow version of the song. Uh, I don't really like the mellow version too much. And on the version I like... Oh, God, excuse me. It's a more, like, uh, hard rock version of it, which I really fucking dig. And I was really hoping they'd do that again. But they actually went back to the more, like, soft rock, like, smooth 
version of it. Uh -huh. So I was just like, oh man. <laughs> Even though everyone else seemed to be enjoying it, so I wasn't about to like put a damper on everyone else's mood. <laughs> Why not? That's like your favorite thing to do. It is, but you know, my dad was there, and you know, he did, I didn't, I didn't want to hurt my dad's feelings. Although I did talk about how I didn't care for that after the fact. <laughs> and what did he say? He's like, yeah, I get that. Oh, I thought because he, like I he, thought he called you a disappointment again. <laughs> yeah, no, not this time. Uh, he started, uh, he's like, yeah, I understand that, because he's the one who showed me that album caught in the act. Yeah, right. So he know he knows exactly what I'm talking about with that stuff. Because I know about, like, 99% of my classic rock stuff because of my dad. Uh, could I just, like... I'm gonna say he's armored. Yeah, I, I was gonna say, I hope no, 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 don't go out, don't I... Worry. I was gonna say, could save. I, like, could I, like, distract him or something? Uh, do a quick save to save, because, you know, we're bitches. I don't have a tug screen! <laughs> Uh, okay, so can I... did not I... want to pay, like, the... Uh, da, 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 da. I did not want to pay the extra 70 for a fucking tuck screen, which I would never use. I can't wait for your dad to call you a disappointment against Steve. <laughs> so, anyway, some other good stuff. What, my dad keeps calling me it? What you got against me? Oh, okay, I misheard you. What? Uh, <laughs> I thought you said I can't wait for your dad. I said your dad. Yes. Yeah, so my dad. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. mean, like, it's gonna be a little hard. I mean, like, whatever, man. I'm sure he'll find a way to. Oh, God. <laughs> he already... <laughs> Did we tell that story about your sister's wedding? I think we have already, but we can do it again. Yeah, he sent a huge down for... Fuck! God damn it. Oh. Uh, oh, you mean about the rain? Yeah. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, the, hu the huge rainstorm. Uh, I don't know. What do you want to talk about about your dad? Oh, uh, I love my dad. Okay. Yeah, I mean, like, he's a really nice guy. We... Never really had the big bonding moment that like I feel like sons and fathers have. Yeah, I've had I've had a uh, few of them with my dad, uh, but I don't know. It's like <laughs> I mean, like he he was also a nerd like me, and I get was, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> he was a nerd like me. He played D and D. He really enjoyed playing Civ Myers Civilization Four. He was a nerd. Yeah. Uh, oh, I mean, like, he played D&D. &D. I'm not surprised yeah. that he was a nerd. Oh, yeah, he, Jesus, he, please stop. He, he loved Sid, Sid Meier's Civilization IV so much that for um, five years straight, like, every day, unless, like, we were on vacation or he just wasn't home, he would play it for several hours. Nice. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, how? It's not like you're playing against other people. You're playing against the AI. Yeah. <laughs> And, like, yeah. there's, a, there's a foreboding moment at the wedding caused by Steven's dad. And uh, then it just started downpouring. Yeah. Uh. So I believe in your dad to call you a disappointment is what I'm getting at. <laughs> that yeah. was an explosive. I didn't realize that. Oh, God, more explosions. Yeah, so... I feel like there was definitely some moments where he thought I was a disappointment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've done a pretty good job. I mean, it's just one of those things where, like, yeah, in high school, I was not the best. Oh, okay. Yeah. Also, you know... Uh, because I was friends with, uh, Connor, my dad thought I might be gay. Oh, all right. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, to end it, I will throw in a couple last little things about, uh, the concert. Eh. Yeah, go for it. I suppose. Uh, oh, wait, uh, right, right, there, there's something we gotta press over here. Some button or whatever we gotta operate. Hello, sir. Uh, do you know the train to 609? I, I do remember there being a tram at this part. So, like, can you... And I'm confused as to why, like, it's not doing anything. Maybe. But anyways, to end the uh, concert yeah. talk, uh, some other good stuff. I went in, and, like, they had memorabilia from all the biggest rock stars. Some uh, some kind of interesting stuff I saw was one about... Uh, <laughs> was one about Justin Timberlake. And I'm like, I don't know if I'd really consider that rock and roll, but all right, I guess you do you, I suppose. And uh, then the other one was uh, Justin Bieber. I was like, w what? <laughs> so, Grand Fuck Railroad. Grand Fuck Railroad, yeah. Grand Fuck Rim Job. So they, so they're Bieber supporters then? I can only, I can only assume so. Yeah. Huh. The media has certainly gone downhill. I'm on the side of the guy who awkwardly talked to you. Uh, all right. So I cannot exactly figure out what I'm doing wrong, so I'm going to look this up then, and uh, I promise some progress in the next episode, because I'm pretty sure it's been minimal progress these last couple times. Oh, this one, yeah, the one before, I think we had progress. Alright, well then, one episode with not that great of progress, that's not that bad. Uh, Alright, everyone, thank you so much for watching, we hope you all enjoyed it. Steven has a PSA announcement. 
So, as you all may know, men can bald. <laughs> so, I'm going to ask you kindly. Send me all your hair, <laughs> and I will protect it. <laughs> P.O. Box 69420. 69420 Cool Street. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Bye, everyone. <laughs>